Hello, everybody, and welcome to week five of the Risen Divine League, Omega Gaming Silence versus Conviction. I am Gordo, and I'm joined today by Rudud. Rudud, how's it going? Uh, going very well today, thank you. Of course, we're looking towards uh, this fifth week here. Uh, we are right into Pro Draft here with Conviction versus Silence. Both teams here looking to lock playoffs whoever wins this game will cement themselves with a playoff spot uh the double round robin is about to come to an end two games left and with both of these teams at that three and one marker whoever wins this game does cement themselves with a playoff spot uh, picks and bans already underway some staple picks jungles and ad's been picked up so far yeah, definitely just pretty much everything going as expected. We do see the spicy Swain coming out out of uh, Conviction. That's definitely a big pick for Boss Giovanni over on that side. Yeah, and I really enjoy Swain as a support champion. I think he's incredibly effective at punishing most AD carries and also teams that Silence appear to be drafting here, you know, champions that want to dive into you. Uh, the Swain has a really good time dealing with, obviously, with that ultimate means that when you're in that range, he's draining, he's dealing damage and healing as well. can be very obnoxious to take uh, take, take down the Swain. Um, and drafting short-range champions into it is uh, definitely what he's going to be looking for and going to be happy with the GP Nidalee so far. Yeah, definitely some combo potential too with the Ash. When you get the stun off, you can drag him in closer. Uh, being able to pair that as a support champion with an AD with hard CC lets you just capitalize on those catch opportunities just a little bit more. Exactly, and now we're entering the second secondary ban phase right here, all getting taken off the table. Um, staple blind pick top planer gets removed, and it's not really a blind pick when we know Koros has got the gangplank in his hands. Uh, worth noting that Silence have actually substituted out their top planer for, I believe, the remainder of the split. Uh, opted for Koros, and uh, long-time Omega fans will recognize him as the old top planer of Omega Gaming Ice, our UML team from previous seasons. Uh, so looking to you know see if he can step into this new roster and have just the same effectiveness here. Yeah, and we are getting word in the chat that uh, that that blank blue square is going to be a karma ban. Exactly. So uh, taking away the Caitlyn Karma lane, definitely you know a potent lane could go toe to toe quite heavily with this Ash Wayne. Uh, and I want to quickly draw back on that point that you made about the Swain, you know, being able to follow up on CC. Ash, uh, Ash as a champion, obviously has the big ultimate that CCs anybody. Um, and the Swain doesn't necessarily have to land the route to get the pullback. As long as the Ash hits the arrow, it means that the Swain can pull back off of that and then combo his grab in with that. So a lot of synergy innately within this lane. And even if you're just setting up in laning phase, the volley into the Swain pull. Uh, you know, with that extra slow make, makes it quite easy for you to connect onto pretty much any target that you're looking for in the early stages. Absolutely. And now that you're bringing up Koros is coming in as the new starter for Omega Gaming this week. Uh, definitely, they're setting him up for success here early, picking a champion that he's very comfortable on this gangplank uh, and immediately taking bans to defend it, doing that Darius in round one and then still defending it even farther with the Orin and Wukong bans coming through in phase two. Yeah, and there we go. I mean, we, we talked about supports getting taken away. We've got Karma and Nautilus now. The Blitzcrank comes through for Banjito, um, and this is going to be a really interesting pickup, really, to see if he can punish this Swain. You know, talked about the fact that the Swain wants people to get into him, but when he's pulled into five members, it doesn't quite have the same effect. Yes, you're going to have that ulti. Yes, you might even get a Zonius at some point, but the Blitzcrank is going to be excellent at trying to pull people in and just nuking them before they have a chance to really sustain themselves. Yeah, that is a strong aggressive duo in the bot lane with the Ash and Swain, but it is also an immobile duo. So it's one that can definitely be preyed upon by that Blitzcrank. Uh, definitely going to be looking to try to tilt the odds in their favor with that pick out of Banjito. It's going to be responded to by the Galio to maybe respond to some of those attacks. And then going to be paired with the Camille potentially here. A really strong top mid duo that we've seen a lot at Worlds can get a lot of ganks off with that pick. Exactly. The Hexec Ultimatum into the Hero's Entrance is a... Uh, unstoppable, really, no counterplay combination that is very Can't simple to out pull of all off. You, ca you can't orange out of uh, x tech Ultimate, and you're quite right. I mean, this is, you know, pretty much... If you're going to look at a GP counter here, I think they've picked it in two solo laners. Uh, you know, you can put the uh, GP in the cage, and then the Galio comes on in, and it's just doomed central, really, for anybody that gets locked up in that. So, 
Uh, quite strong pick side lane potential from Conviction here. Galio doesn't even have to be on your screen and the Camille can just jump in, go for a fight and pretty much ensure that you have enough CC to follow up with the damage from Camille to really take down any member here on this silent squad. Don't necessarily have the generic front line that you expect from a tank. Uh, really going to be relying on that Blitzcrank more so than anything else. Yeah, definitely a lane that we're going to want to pay close attention to this game as we're rounding out this draft and getting into the in-client draft shortly. Uh, is this top lane because both teams have expended so many draft resources to try to get a comfortable matchup for themselves in the top lane. I suspect that that's not going to go away once the game starts and we're going to see a lot of gameplay being focused around that lane. Yeah, and especially with these two junglers as well. Graves and Nidalee both very good at farming, but also quite skirmish heavy in the early game as well. So look to see whether we get some topside 2v2s, maybe 3v3s around the first Scuttle Crab. A lot of potential for action to occur on the top side of the map. Same as the bot side really with, you know, two champions that sl slow or root or hook. Uh, as we have with the Swain and the Blitzcrank, we could see a lot of action early on from both of these teams. Um, and the Snowball really is going to be uh, something to keep an eye on because both teams scale quite well into the late game. Gangplank and Camille in the top side, obviously the Camille better in the split push, but you favour GP in a team fight more so than anything else. Uh, but there's a lot of a lot of things to keep track on, and if one team starts getting a bit of a lead, you can see them accelerating it quite heavily. Yeah, for sure. And definitely while both picks do do certainly scale, as you said, both uh, both teams are also very capable of snowballing away with this game, uh, particularly from the jungle position. It's certainly going to be dangerous for both teams to risk, you know, going for something a little bit too aggressive, getting punished and just allowing the other team to keep that lead snowballing and to just take control of the game early on with some early advantages. Exactly, and both teams have the potential to, once they have that lead, they, they have all of the tools available to them to continue punishing that. The Ash and Gal the Ash ultimate for engage on top of Hextech Ultimatum Hero's Entrance, something that we've already talked about. Uh, and then we've got on top of that gang, uh, well, on, then on the other side of that rather, Silence, they have the Blitzcrank to pretty much set up any engages they would like if they're able to find the target. So ease of execution, definitely there for conviction in terms of uh, allowing the snowball to commence um, and allowing it to you know continue rolling down that hill. Uh, and Silence really relying on Banjito to get fights started. And then once they're started, hoping to you know, take the 5 versus 14 fight after taking somebody out with that Blitzcrank grab. Yeah, for sure. And it's going to be, you know, as they as these teams start scaling and getting into team fights, you know, there's a lot of powerful engage tools coming out of CNV, as you already brought out. But there's also going to be just a lot of controlling aspects coming out of Silence's roster. They're going to be able to throw down two different kinds of traps on this team. They're going to be able to force people into specific areas using barrels and using Azir soldiers. And all of those are just going to feed into this Blitzcrank pick even more. They're going to force people to stand in positions that they aren't comfortable in and that they wouldn't be in normal and they're going to try to capitalize exactly it's such a perfect point that you bring up trying to fight in corridors versus things like gangplank like azir never really goes well for teams and whilst we can see that conviction probably have a more split push focused composition uh, if silence are able to you know force fights around neutral objectives typically where a split push comp is you know really put to the test uh, in terms of macro decision making uh, if Silence are on top of the setup and on top of playing around these uh, thinner corridors around the jungle, then we could see a, a very beneficial team fight situation presenting itself to them. Yeah, no, and that's where I expect to see Conviction try to get at least some amount of focus around this uh, this pick game. They're going to want to try to catch people out with the Camille Galio combo. They're going to want to try to catch people out with the Swain E or by comboing something with the Ash Ultimate. And they're going to want to try to get their leads that way, because if they're just going to try to run at each other 5v5 without being able to get something interesting to occur with the Galio or without being able to land a good Ash ultimate, it's likely going to be a lost fight for them. Exactly. And if we look at how the uh, silence composition you know, w would work out here, we've got the, the, the Blitzcrank obviously going to be their leading gauge. 
Uh, but then for Conviction, you know, as long as it's not the Galio getting pulled in, the Galio can follow up quite easily on that hooked target. You know, if the Blitzcrank's in the middle of the team, you're essentially giving Galio that free ulti. And if you're playing the Swain, playing this Camille, they both have the potential to either Zonyas use the Hextech ultimatum to buy a few times of it, buy a few seconds, a few moments of invulnerability and allow that Galio to come in and support. So there's definitely, you know, two things to keep track on is if they're able to pull the Galio in, then yes, they have an opportunity to CC him down and lock him up. But that's also going to be combated by the fact that that idol of Durand is going to be pretty devastating in the middle of a team fight. Yeah, for sure. Definitely going to be some team comps where we're going to want to focus on getting control over locations early on because face checking into either of these teams is going to be particularly dangerous because of what they can do once they get set up in those sorts of areas so you both teams are going to want to be very careful to be able to maintain their river control and when they want to start going for some of these mid-game objectives when they want to start snowballing into dragons and heralds it's going to be a lot more important for them to get that set up early and make sure that they aren't face checking into fog of war exactly and that comes down to just set, uh, obviously the setup and how well this pick composition from uh silence is going to be able to play out because if the blitzcrank's able to get some kills early then that'll set up silence for uh, the potential to start stacking drakes pretty early on graves is probably the better solo drake taker out of the two junglers but expect bot lane to at least have priority caitlin into ash's you know fairly favorable or fairly neutral matchup rather and it really is the supports that go uh, and dictate the way the lane plays out and it's really going to be who hits those hooks or who hits those roots that's going to determine who has priority and who's able to allow their jungler to have free roam around the map. Yeah, definitely. We might, also, we might also be expecting to see this Swain once it gets that Q can at least spam it on waves and can just try to shove the other team in uh, between Volley and Swain Q. You got to believe that the Blitzcrank is going to be left a little lacking in terms of wave clear. Now, exactly. with all that settled, we're going to take a quick break as we load on into game. Uh, stick around. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes.
Hello, everybody. Welcome back to week five of the Risen Divine League. Omega Gaming Silence and Conviction here on the red and blue sides, respectively, both looking to top this group. I'm Gordo, joined once again by Rudude. Rudude, are you ready for this game? Yeah, no, getting engaged on by that hook shot right at level one, going to force out the flash from Azuto. Well played by Duncan Dumplin, having the presence of mind to start that E ability and go on in, force the flash. Yeah, no, and as I'm sure will become relevant throughout the course of this game, not a bit of that was cleansable. It's a knockback followed in by uh, by another dis displacement ability, neither of which can actually be cleansed away from the Ibis Caitlyn Summoner spell. Exactly, and I uh, this is you know this is the power of Swain there with these hooks or roots rather connecting. Good from Azuto to trade on back with the Piltover Peacemaker, putting a uh, Boss Giovanni a little bit back in his place. Yeah, going to have to remain oh so vigilant with having this flash down because getting hooked in by that Swain, getting tugged out of position just a little bit too far and getting slowed by that Ash could very easily result in a 2v2 kill against Omega Gaming Silence for the side of conviction. They need to be on their toes here and hook going to be a little bit short. Exactly. The level two comes in for both sides. No advantage gained, unfortunately. Banjito missing the hook, but there's Ooh, the grab. That is going to be a snare onto Ash. He's going to get hit by the vision of Empire, but not quite enough follow-up yet as both those laners are level two. Yeah, they have to respect the fact that the Blitz cooldown is about to come back up off. Um, and once that is available, getting hooked into your enemy team's minion wave, getting fo focused down by a Caitlyn is definitely not something that you want to be happening to your official nukes and boss Giovanni both. Uh, respecting that they got a nice trade, uh, but no more going to come through for them. I'm going to see some trading in the top lane. Duncan Dumpin getting a good trade here onto this gangplank while he has no mana. Going to be supported by Strixer up from the jungle, but not too much follow-up CC there. Kronos is going to blow the flash, actually, but it's going to manage to stay alive. Exactly. So flash expended on the top side. They've already burned the flash of the ADC here. And Dunkin' Donut going back. Dunkin' Dumpling rather going back in Dunk. gets the nice uh, trade. Duncan is really the point that's got to be emphasized mm. here. He's going in hard with these hook shots, trying to get as much damage as he can onto Koros. Knows that he's got the flash down, knows that he has no mana available, and just going to be bullying this lane pretty hard early on. Exactly. Already forced the recall from Koros, and he's only able to pick up a Sapphire Crystal, so not necessarily the biggest laning p power spike that you could be asking for, and I think he's even managed to set a freeze in the top lane here for Duncan, so already this top side of the map looking very favorable for conviction uh, that being said banky kang this entire time you know has been full clearing his jungle managed to get his entire clear going but a spear hitting means that odin has to respect this pressure from the nidalee second krugs are going to go over to strixer uh, and banky kang not actually going to be able to pick up the enemies so slight advantage for the graves as he's going to have a couple of his camps left Benito to respawn going up Looking for that aggressive hook, but not quite going to be able to get it. Oh, as lane. we're going to just look back on the top lane as Koros dealing as much damage as he can onto Duncan Dumplin here, but Strixer going to be up from the other side. Koros has no flash available, and he's caught on the wrong side of the map. He's just going to go down for first blood over he's... to the side of Conviction. Yeah, Strixer using the uh, vertical jungling, really, that have been established and not uh, 
not giving any remorse to Koros. No flash on the top side. He's going to get punished for that. And look at this CS lead already establishing itself. 39 to 16. Yes, Koros is going to pick up a little bit underneath this turret. But definitely nowhere near 20 CS stockpiled right there. The Camille goes back, gets a full sheen and the boots as well. Uh, whereas Koro still just sat with that Sapphire Crystal and the control ward to keep himself a little bit safer. Uh, but this top lane advantage is definitely quite sizable already. Yeah, and they're building the same items. So you can tell for sure when one is behind versus the other, where sometimes, you know, when you're going for different builds, you have different thresholds. It's a little hard to determine. Both of these champions want Sheen on their first back and Koro is just not able to get it done because of that death. Exactly. And even just the early force out as well being so detrimental to him. Uh, meaning that now with no teleport, he's likely going to have to try and find an incredible well, back That's going to be a hook from Banjito onto boss Giovanni. Giovanni forced to flash away as he gets the Ignite placed down onto him. Going to be a positive trade for the Omega Gaming Silence bot lane. Exactly. Now they just need another hook to land onto boss Giovanni here. And he should fall. Azuto still has plenty of mana to keep bullying out this Ashwain lane. Uh, and Banjito has the flash available. We could see a little bit of an aggressive play coming out. Should they want to go for it, but... Looks like there's going to be an opportunity here, maybe, for this Swain and this Ash to, to play a little bit safe and get a recall going. Yeah, no, Azudo can step up forward and be more aggressive now because he's got that flash back up from level one. We're at six minutes now and he's waited it out. He survived uh, and hasn't been punished too harshly. In fact, has a significant CS lead in this bot lane. Exactly, and you can see that in the recalls coming through. Uh, the Ash only able to pick up the Caulfield's Warhammer, which will no doubt be working towards the Essence Reaver. Dunkin 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 and Koros in. trading on to each other once again. That's a good barrel chain coming out of Koros. Going to deal a lot of damage here. But Odin has actually been swept back into the turret by Madshow. Madshow is going to get a second turret shot onto him there. Great play knowing the ranges of his own ultimate and where it's going to push the Galio. Solo kill for Madshow Gap. Yeah, really well played in the mid lane. Pulls him under the turret and with two turret shots hitting, Odin knows that the flash is nowhere near enough to get him to safety. And that's an advantage that... Silence we're definitely looking for, right? You know, we looked at the top side, wasn't going too well for them. The bot lane is probably mirrored uh, in the in the discrepancies from top lane. So at that point, it was pretty even, but the mid lane going in favor of Silence gives them another avenue to start working through. Yes, the top lane is not going too favorably, but they have two winning lanes for this Nidalee to play around. Uh, and even though she's down on the experience, you can see picked up the early dragon and is now able to maybe start snowballing a little bit more. Yeah, they already had an advantage on the bot side from forcing that recall earlier. They were able to get the wave pushed in on towards the side of Conviction. Uh, but with that solo kill in mid lane, that just pushes it over the edge and they can easily convert for a dragon. Meanwhile, Stixer has found Koros on trying to get away with doing Banky Kang's Krugs there. Going to just interrupt that and head on his way out. Yeah, he is able to uh, walk away and does save the Krug camp of the Nidalee. But obviously seeing the Graves on the top side, we can look at the minimap here. Banky Kang spares no time in just invading into the Graves' jungle. Uh, and with the two winning lanes that we talked about earlier, we know that this is a fairly safe invade as long as he's able to get in and get out before the Graves comes on back in. Uh, Cannon Barrage here going to be used to break the freeze set up by Duncan Dumpling. Uh, and wisely so, because if he didn't use it here, he's just going to get denied wave after wave. Uh, Banjito may be fishing for a hook, and with Azir and Nidalee roaming through the bot side jungle, this could be dangerous. They know there's a control ward in the tri bush, but here goes Banjito. Yeah, no, that's going to be a big hook onto official nukes. Nukes might get blown up before Banky Kang can even arrive here, not even assisting on that kill. That's a 2v2. Yeah, and you know, Giovanni playing it smartly, getting himself back to safety, especially without having the flash. Uh, official nukes not quite getting the memo. It's going to miss a little bit of a wave under this turret. Just now respawns, so he's going to be sprinting back to lane uh, to try and help out Dumpling. Ooh, and that's going to be a missed hook shot. Going to be a failed opportunity to get some higher trades there. Is Koros just going to shoot him on his way out? Get that grasp for the Undying proc. Almost a hook from Banjito there once again onto Giovanni. Doing really effective on this Blitzcrank. Even when he misses, he's at least making his presence known. Exactly. And, you know, sometimes you can discredit Blitzcrank players for throwing the hook out uh, too liberally and just sort of throwing it and then wasting the cooldown, you know, right there, Banjito throwing Oh, but that's going to be a hook on Giovanni. He pulls him in, perfectly placed around the side of the minion wave, curves the hook, and picks up a kill for himself there. 1-0-1 on both these bot laners. 
Yeah, again, another nice hook coming through the Ignite, taking that one down. Mad Show could be in a Breaking little bit of danger. King going to be collapsing here onto Odin with Mad Show Gap. Mad Show Gap going to be forced to flash away as he finds Strixer in the bush. They're just going to be disengaging here as Banky King is looking for aggressive hooks, or spears rather, onto the side, but going to be re-engaged on by Strixer, going to preemptively flash. Mad Show Gap going to miss the ultimate, probably thinking Duncan Dumplin was a little bit closer there, but now he's going to get the Hextech ultimate on him. He's going to be picked up by Odin, and that's going to be a one for zero in the favor of Conviction. Yeah, and right away we see that top lane advantage rear its head again. The Camille able to roam down and the Gangplank not having that cannon barrage, remember, used it to break the freeze. Uh, a big punish coming through from Conviction. Nice to keep Mad Show down a little bit here, and that's going to neutralize up that mid lane once again. Uh, you know, if the, if the kill in his favor was going to give him a lead, getting that death back, re resetting that lane, essentially. Galio going to likely recall and might even have full proto belt on his recall here, which is... Definitely better than the components of a Nash's Tooth, or even the Ludens that he's trying to build up so far for Macho. Yeah, no, the members of Conviction, they're maybe playing a little bit too conservatively around the hookshot coming out of Camille. You know, the Zier ultimate going to be a little bit short, the Flash going to be a little bit early, and those resources being down means that Duncan Dumplin' can just follow up with Axe Tech Ultimatum and keep people locked down. Exactly, really well played as well in the initial engagement to dodge the shifting sand, or not dodge, but really deny uh, the, the shifting sands from the Azir to make sure he couldn't get out to danger using his own email that meant that he had to burn the flash. Uh, and once both those cooldowns are off, the Camille just has to walk on in. Uh, press the Hextech ultimatum and there's really no way of getting out of there. Short of having stopwatch and a ton of HP, with three members wailing on you, that was almost certain doom here. Nukes could be looking for a play, has the crystal arrow, but with the cleanse on Azuto, they decide to call it off. Banjito are going to walk into this tri brush, try and get more vision for them. Banky Kang nearby as well. Three or four members looking towards this bot lane. Uh, and now they're looking for a slight invade into the jungle here. Yeah, Braves he's trying to pick Raptors. up Pryo around this dragon, trying to set up for it to spawn here in about 30 seconds. Just going to try to bully Strixer out of his own jungle, prevent him from getting any camp, so that there's only the Krugs up at the time being. Man, it's just really trying neat. to press that bot lane advantage. Zudo is so far ahead at this point as a 35 CS lead as well as a kill and an assist. He has not quite finished the Infinity Edge yet, but he's going to be on that item spike pretty soon, although potentially not before the Dragon fight. No, in all likelihood we'll have to fight on the Infinity Edge components, but then again so will the Ash here. And she doesn't even have both the, doesn't even have the components of an Essence Reaver right now. Has the Core Fields, but doesn't have the BF Sword to, to, to go with it. So the, the discrepancy between these ADCs is definitely measurable and definitely very evident here. The levels as well, but Duncan is going to go in on Koros. Yeah, going to be trading back and forth here. Dumplin still has quite a bit of damage. Going to be able to burst him incredibly quickly here and lock him into the Hextech ultimatum. Going to be a solo kill here for Duncan Dumplin through the flash. Excellently played. Yeah, that's the solo kill going to come through in the top side and Dumplin doesn't have the teleport yet. Uh, so this could be a 4v4 in favor of Silence, should they choose to take it. It looks like it. Silence does not know the timer on the teleport. They think Duncan Dumplin might have it back up yet. It's really hard to calculate this season, but they're going to be flashing in on getting Nuke Ducks, or see Nuke Ducks, official nukes with the flash. Boss Giovanni picked up by Mad Show Gap on the other side. It's going to be a one fight for Silence, one for zero, but they're going to be picking up the dragon on the side of Conviction. Yeah, Nukes isn't safe yet. Banjito doesn't have flash, but Mad Show Gap. Oh, Mad Show Gap gonna just be able to get him with the soldier, keeping him pinned against that turret and not able to create enough distance between himself and the Azir. Oh, TP from Chorus okay. coming in behind Conviction right now. Yeah. No, Udo and Banky Kang looking to uh, come in from behind here. Koros here as well, getting onto Strixer, but Duncan Duplin is going to fling himself into the fight along with the Galio, going to pick up Koros right away as Matchel Gap is coming in from the side, trying to get those hits down from the soldiers to pick up Strixer. Strixer going to go down to the Blitzcrank hook as Azudo is also flashing forward here, going to one-shot the Galio as Duncan Dumplin is forced to hook shot away. Yeah, so a lot of kills going into Silence's pocket right there, overall picking up, uh, you know, two kills on the back of the fight and two kills at the beginning as well. So four kills in their favor, and the mid lane turret still remains for silence. So the big Ooh, objective... that's going to be a yank in on Banjito, going to blow that Blitzcrank passive, but nothing else. He's just going to walk away. Yeah, gets himself to safety right there. And the Swain at this point, uh, you know, working towards that Zonius doesn't quite have the, the same threat that you expect from a, a more carry-oriented Swain. You know, Swain conquer a bot lane and mid lane things so that we uh, are, are starting to pop up a little bit here, but without that level of income. 
Uh, they don't really need to fear the Swain just yet. Stopwatch still available, so we can look to see these ultimates really be impactful with that stasis availability. A lot of things to look forward to, though, as we see the Snowball now not really going either side. Slight gold lead for Silence in this game, and the majority of that is going to be in that AD carry role. If we toggle the gold just here, nearing 2,000 gold discrepancy between the Caitlyn and the Ash. Mid lane as well, you know, you can look at the, the kills going in favour of Madshow, but the gold overall, pretty even. Uh, and then the, the difference on the top side of the map is really where Conviction are keeping themselves an advantage. For Duncan sure, and I, but I really want to emphasise... Oh, wait. Benjito almost picking up a hook there, but I really want to emphasize just how hard, far ahead in stats Zudo really is with this item lead. Like, it looks like actually he's going to get engaged on here, going to be forced to blow the cleanse immediately for the Enchanted Crystal Arrow, and now he's going to use that itemization advantage to just tear through the other side as official nukes going to be blown up there, and Boss Giovanni going to be forced away. But Odin here is going to be looking for the engage on a Kronos here. Strix are going to flash under the turret, not going to be able to quite get oh. it, and going to go down to the turret. It's going to be a one for one, actually, as he burns down to the red smite. Yeah, red buff plus skirmish's saber was enough to take down Koros, but it was not in vain as he's able to pick up the Graves who commits a lot of his resources there to get that kill. Uh, that's going to be Flash and the ultimate used from the Graves, and obviously the collateral damage. Not a big cooldown, but definitely something to keep track of should there be a skirmish within the next sort of minute or so. Uh, nice one for one as well, and when you're behind, you'll take the one for ones, but the turret on the bot side going down as well, really emphasizing this lead for the Caitlyn Blitzcrank, and even though they got pretty much the perfect engage onto Azuto, having cleanse available really mitigated the entirety of it, and Banjito holding his hook till the very end, using, as you mentioned, that item disparity to claw through the majority of that fight, and then finally the rocket grab comes through to really secure the kill back on official nukes. Really showing that this bot side of the map can now start to take over. They've taken the bot yep. lane tier 1 and now they're going to transition to mid lane. Maybe look to try and get that mid tier 1 because the Galio, at this stage at least, doesn't have the greatest wave clear. And if he tries to step up to use the Justice Punch to wave clear, he can definitely get pulled in by Banjito. Yeah, Azuto going to be now flexing this Caitlyn around the map, going to be trying to abuse its long range and its wave clearing capabilities to try to take some of these turrets. And just like that, Duncan Dumplin is going to be in onto Mad Show Gap, but actually gets pushed out of the Hextech ultimatum. Well played there on the Azir. Mad Show Gap able to escape the baby cage and retreat back to his turret. Yeah, it does cost him his flash and his ultimate, so this cooldown can be reused, really. As soon as the Hextech ultimatum comes back off, off cooldown, Mad Show will only be able to do that so many times with the flash available. Uh, but they get gets away this time and doesn't give anything over. Azuto manages Ooh. to take down the mid-tier one, and now Boss Giovanni walking into the jungle gets greeted by Banky Kang, who blast cones himself to safety. Now, Strixer and Odin going to be chasing on through here. That's going to be an Ash ultimate coming through. They were hoping to make a play happen there, but this was not meant to be a little bit late. Uh, but it looks like Strixer is going to be getting engaged here by Banky Kang. Banky Kang going in for the 1v1, but actually going to get surprisingly blown up by this Red Smite Graves. Reducing the damage he takes, increasing the damage he gives, able to get the 1v1. Meanwhile, Boss Giovanni getting soloed out by Koros on the other side. Yeah, it looks like a rocket grab just came through, and uh, this Swain... Uh, didn't didn't even need to use the stopwatch, didn't have the time it feels like, didn't use the ultimate either. Uh, gonna be taken down and a 4v4 on the map with the jungler down for silence. You'd have thought that the rest of Conviction would have liked to step up and maybe contest this Drake. Instead we can see the Graves goes up to the top side, he's gonna take the Rift Herald instead. So trading the objectives going one for one and we'll have to see whether this Herald is able to be used uh, to a lot of effectiveness because starting to stack these Drakes uh, at this stage of the game, it's definitely more important and more profitable for you. You know, you don't get plates from using Harold at this stage in the game, so you're definitely looking to get maybe one or two charges off uh, for it to, to get a lot of value. Mad Show finding Strixer in the jungle, just going to go a little bit of poke and then walk on away here. Azuto resetting here. And now I'll see where he looks to go out. Top tier one, the only Ooh, That's a remaining. big hook on the Dumplin. Dumplin has to hook shot away with the turret shot. Going to survive with only a tiny sliver of HP. Now, Mad Show Gap going forward aggressively, going to force the flash out of Odin. Might not have been necessary there as the Azir doesn't have the flash himself for the further engage. But certainly flexing some muscle here, showing that they have a lot of damage. Definitely this fully completed Runic Echoes and the Zonya's components of Banky Kang. Definitely something to be feared if you are a Conviction member. There's not really, as we mentioned, any particular tank. Koros, Koros. Though, is getting collapsed on here by Duncan Dumplin along with official nukes. Going to get that Enchanted Crystal Arrow stun. Going to get 
the her uh, heroic entrance there as well as the Hextech ultimate. I'm going to be using three ultimates there for a pick on the Koros. Yeah, and Koros uh, overextending a little bit once again. You know, five deaths in the game. That's, you know, a considerable fraction of his teams. But this entire time, he's still feeling fairly strong, really. Uh, and with that tr Trinity Force complete, it is a little bit behind the Camille, but appears to be holding his own in side lane one versus ones. Uh, still pulling a lot of resources from Conviction to take him down. And we can see the yeah, cross no. map from Silence is enough. They're able to establish themselves in the top side jungle. They're going to get not one. They might even go for a second turret here. It doesn't look like anybody from Conviction is nearby. And they might go to cross map the other side. They have the Rift Herald on the graves, but with four members yeah, they spot are so side. far behind on this on the side of Conviction. They're just going to, before they even get the outer turret here, as they just pick that up, they're going to be losing an inhibitor turret simultaneously. And this macro play is really what's given Silence a lot of the advantages in this game. Every time they go and punish Koros, every time they try to put this gangplank even farther behind, there's response on the other side of the map. But just like that, the Rift Herald gets thrown down in mid, going to pick up the mid inner turret, and is now going to be charging forward on to the mid inhibitor turret. It looks like Silence has to get back and try to answer this. Yeah, it looks like they're going to be able to. The charge might go off, but I don't think it's going to get them the turret here. Koros, Koros is going to try to get it in there, going to try to get the bullet in to poke the eye, but not quite going to be able to do so before it gets the charge off. So overall, you know, three turrets for one in favor of Silence, right? Oh, two rather, because they got a bot lane tier one as well. So two for three turret trade for Conviction. That is going to be a negative trade, obviously, and just raw numbers and gold. Macho, oh, use the dash. Enchanted Crystal Arrow coming through. Macho Gap getting engaged on by Duncan Dumplin, who is able to survive through the Azir ultimate. Not sure how he interrupted that, but now Strixer is getting engaged on by Koros. Koros is going to be able to kill him out. It's going to be a one for one, as Duncan Dumplin is not going to be able to follow. Him. Though thinks about it, uh, but then holds off against it. But look at Silence here. Banky Kanga and Banjito, as well as this two item Caitlyn going to look to take this Baron now. Nothing really called, and there's the hook oh, or the Spotted hook out by the Ash E. They're going to look to come in here with the Swain W, going to try to push them away, and it looks like they're going to abandon the Baron. Yeah, a lot of vision. Uh, oh, but Banky Kang still here, looking for a potential hook. They've been punishing these angles all game as Duncan Dumplin is going in here, but is going to run right into Banjito as he picks him up. Banjito now going to hook in Giovanni. Giovanni's going to get picked up here as well. Banjito was hiding in the Baron pit and has been able to pick up two kills as a result. Excellent play around vision on the side of silence. Exactly, and Banjito able to get out of the pit before the Baron takes him down. Pick up some nice honeys for himself. And now the st Baron has been started. Azuto and Mad Show have an insane amount of yeah, DPS here we go. on Odin it. going to look for an engage here, going to just try to be able to make this happen in the 3v5, but the Baron is already down, and now it's going to be Banjito flashing backwards to get the hook in. Azuto taking down Odin. Now the remaining members have to run away. Strixer and official nukes have no chance of winning this fight. They have to try to run away and trade back if they can. It looks like the Graves is almost going to pick up Banjito. Banjito getting hit by even more volleys from the side, but is going to be able to just back off. Yeah, so three kills and the Baron going the way of Silence overall in the extended play. Definitely a massive swing right into their favours. If the macro from the top lane wasn't enough, they now have themselves the Baron on five members to really emphasise how strong they can be at roaming around the map and getting things going. 4,000 gold lead right now, and we'll have to see if they're able to start closing out this game. Mountain Dragon spawns in 20 seconds, so that's likely going to be the next objective for them to pick up. With Scuttlecrab taken by Strix, so it might not be as easy as they're hoping for, but the gold lead really does speak for itself, and the item discrepancies are more important. This Caitlyn is an entire item ahead of the Ash, and playing around the Caitlyn is something that Silence have played incredibly well to, and should be able to just take this objective with no pressure. They can just burst out opposing team members so quickly off of this Blitzcrank hook. They can get the Sheen proc with the Parley off of Grain Plank. They can get these crit headshots built with as much AD as possible on the Caitlyn. Uh, they can take you down incredibly fast. Exactly. And, you know, you can look at just how powerful this Caitlyn really is with the bounty that she's got on her head. 550 gold. It's going to be a big cash in if anybody on the Conviction roster is going to be able to pick it up and for me at least I'm feeling like you want this to go onto your Camille and maybe start sending your Camille more into a side lane and just sacrificing the issue with that though. Banjito. Oh, and that's going to be a Blitzcrank hook on to Strixer. Strixer just going to be blown up immediately. Banjito stealing the fourth kill of the game. He's feeling himself on this Blitzcrank. You can always tell when Blitzcranks are doing well when they start stealing more kills. Exactly. He's now got himself the fourth of the game trying to rival his AD carry right here. Um, with a 4v5 on the map, 
Silence should really just be able to command what they want on the, the map right now. Taking the inhibitor turret, and looks like the inhibitor with little to no resistance from Conviction. They have a wave pushing in the mid lane, thanks to Koros. We'll have to see if they rotate to there as well, because this is very clean macro play right now. Yeah, no, Conviction is playing a pick comp right now, but they're going to be the ones getting picked as Duncan Dumplin gets pulled in yet again. It's going to be a heroic entrance from Odin trying to turn this fight around, but he's not going to be able to do that. A huge Emperor's Divide comes through by Mad Show Gap, making it a double kill for Banky Kang, followed up by a kill on to Koros. Another huge hook onto Strixer as Strixer is going to go down as well, and that's going to be the game. Omega Gaming Silence going to take game one in convincing fashion. A huge bot lane carry game out of Azuto and Panjito as they just try to pick up Odin here for the last little goodie. They are going to get the shutdown onto Azuto, but it looks like it's just going to be too late. They've got the Baron minions, they've got the Azir autos. They're just going to run through the Nexus here, and that's going to be the end of game one. Yeah, and they pick up the Caitlyn, they pick up the Blitzcrank, they get those bounties, but it's at the cost of their Nexus here. Omega Gaming Silence taking game number one in a fairly convincing fashion. 25 minute game, quite short compared to what we've seen recently, and it looks like Silence bouncing back pretty hard already. Yeah, no, really coming up in those last few fights was Banjito on the Blitzcrank. Able to play around Vision so well, able to sneak through the hooks right around the minions everywhere where it was necessary, uh, and just coming away having a great game. No deaths and a huge amount of kill participation. Exactly. This is, was the pick composition executed pretty flawlessly right here. As soon as they got the Baron, they ended the game as well, and that's something that I really admire from teams is if they're able to, you know, use the Baron effectively, and Silence definitely were able to in this game, despite all of the pressure that Conviction put top lane, Koro still ended the highest level in the team, even the game, rather, as well, tied with Odin there. But the, the Gangplank was so put down in the early game and still managed to end with nearly the same amount of gold as the rest of his team and the, you know, highest level as well, speaks to the, the caliber of player that they've got in the top side right now. So a lot of... Uh, positive things to work on uh, and a lot of hope as we go into the second game really yeah no you said it yourself Koros is a veteran of this scene he knows how to play the weak side he knows how to take his punches where he has to where to go behind when he has to as long as his team is able to make plays around the other side of the map he knows that he can trust them to be able to get done what needs to get done and he knows that he himself is going to still be able to be relevant late game especially on a comfort scaling pick like this gang playing. Exactly. You know, you just saw it right there as well. Most damage in the game. So going huge in the in the team fights as they needed him to. Numerous times he was trading back one for one onto Strixer in particularly, who, you know, had a pretty decent game on the Graves, made things happen, but this Blitzcrank pick really was the selling feature of the of the silence comp. All right, then. Well, really excited to get on to this next draft here. We are going to take a short break while the players reset and figure out what they're going to be doing for the next game. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. <laughs> 